all for you. Grilling bluegill, frying bluegill, and a bonus side at the end. All right, let's catch some lunch. Going, Dad. Going, Dad. Got another. Going, Dad. Got one, Dad. Got one, Dad. My son saw this method for cleaning fish where you use a pressure washer. We decided to go ahead and try that this time, and I'm happy to report to you it's worth it. It's definitely easier and cleaner fish by the time you're done. Pick your favorite oil to marinate the fish in. You might like grapeseed. It doesn't really alter the flavor of what you're cooking very much, and it has a really high smoke point, so it's tolerant applying that heat. Citrus does a nice job of mellowing out some of that fishy bluegill flavor, and we really love this tool for getting all the juices out of that half a lemon. While we're out there getting that grill set up, we go ahead and put the spices in and let it sort of marinate or permeate some of that meat and a little bit of a rest. My son likes the Cajun. I like the seafood magic. We're going to go ahead and do both of these in two separate cooks. The Lodge Sportsman's Grill is really efficient at the coals, but you kind of have to catch it and not let it burn up in the chimney, which is what I ended up doing. So I had to add just a few extra coals. Asparagus is such a simple side. Just a little bit of olive oil, some salt, some pepper, and then throw in some pickled garlic, and you have a really quick cook in the skillet. And we've got a secret we'll show you later on how to get those to stay fresh, green, and crisp. I decided I wanted to do some of this in the skillet just for switching it up a little bit, and it's a really windy day. This windscreen does a great job of containing the BTUs that are coming out in this portable stovetop. This Gas One stovetop has the highest BTUs that I've seen out there. I believe it's 15,000 BTUs, and it cranks out some heat, which is nice for some of the cooks that you do. If you like the equipment that we use for cooking in this video, we'll put some links down below that you can click on and purchase them. So fish on a skillet or even the cast iron grill, as it heats up, it will release. It'll tell you when it's ready to be flipped. This one's sticking. This one has already released. Just look at that great cast iron sear and flavor going into that meat, the smoke, and wait until you can see how it releases from the grill grates, not your typical sticky fish on a grill. Here comes the Lodge Sportsman's Grill with this draft. Let's open that all the way up. We'll get those coals going hotter. There's a draft on each side. One of the things that I love about the new Lodge Sportsman's Pro Grill versus the Lodge Sportsman's Grill, the old school one, is those draft doors. Completely changes the heat and spreads it around the grill grates much better. No sticking, the skin stays on the fish where a lot of the flavor resides and some of the crispiness. This is just a great way to cook fish. Here's our tip when you're doing asparagus. Right at the beginning, when you put those into your skillet, throw in about a quarter to a half a cup of water. You'll start out with the steam. You'll see you'll have those vibrant, fresh green colors. Then immediately after it burns off, you get some of that browning or searing on the outside with that olive oil that's in it. 
makes for fantastic asparagus. You want to test to make certain that that meat is ready to release from the grill grates, getting a little bit firmed up. And look at that, no sticking to the grill. That meat didn't disintegrate and stay on the grill grates. You may have also noticed that we left the fond or those crispy bits from cooking the fish before we put the asparagus in. That adds flavor. Garlic, when it's fried or browned up a little bit, should have kind of an almondy flavor. Watch out for the burning. I actually, right there, I removed some garlic. The temperature was too high. I turned it down, and I want to keep that garlic out of my dish, because that burned garlic, because it gets a very bitter flavor. The man's got to eat, too. When you smell that asparagus frying in the skillet, you can't wait for it to get to the plate. You've got to taste it during the cooking. If you caught my first video where Lodge sent me this grill to review, I had a problem with the frame being kind of torqued and rocking back and forth. That worked itself out. It was operator error. I tightened the offset bolts wrong, and once I loosened them up, it leveled out perfectly. On top of the asparagus, we decided to pair this with a nice, easy, four ingredient Dutch oven bread. So easy to make. Once you've done it a time or two, it is just a great addition. Comfort food belly filler for any plate that you're making. I'll put a link up above right here so that you can get to this full video on how to make this easy bread. YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.